स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so what i have is the following we have region it turns out that region 2 or case 2 case 2 is a case of constant acceleration we are going to measure this or quantify this acceleration purely via newtonian arguments okay Re case case 1 3 5 are my r my 0 0 acceleration or 0 net force okay and my case my case 4 uh, is my constant deceleration okay okay so let us try to find all these regions of constant acceleration and constant deceleration right so let us look at the region the region of constant acceleration and try to find how much time is taken by the inner nanotube to spend in this region which is case 2 region of constant constant acceleration so in this case uh, we set up our newtonian equation that is the via newton second law m times d2 z dt2 is equal to uh, is equal to the force uh, which is work done negative of work done by d or this is going to be minus ecc star right so this is for region number 2 and now uh, so we just plug in ecc star notice that the inner tube Uh, so we need to integrate this equation twice to find out z as a function of uh, t and to do that we also need the initial condition note we assume that uh, in case in case 2 uh, the particle or the inner nanotube starts with a zero velocity and uh, let us integrate once to see what happens so integrate integrate and use the fact that dz dt at t equal to 0 is 0 integrate once and see that i get dz dt is equal to uh, is equal to uh, is equal to let me use the the notation mod w so that to avoid minus or plus signs so i'm i'm going to use the 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 positive value here so w right so this is a case of constant uh, hold on let us look at the figure so minus w is negative or w is positive right so we can peacefully use w to be a positive function right so this is our uh, this is our w being positive right so w is positive so i get that w by m d times t right so that is the integration once and and further we integrate once more we integrate once more and also use the position coordinate note that z at t equal to 0 is at a position coordinate uh, notice that the boundary point of case 2 is at so the case 2 will be so this is so this is the region of constant deceleration so we want to find out at the what is the value of the position between the boundary point 2 and 3 right so that will be given by this particular this particular value l1 minus l2 or i see that 
z at t equal to 0 is l 1 minus l 2 and suppose the extrusion distance was d. So, we will get a minus d. So, d is my extrusion distance. Okay. So, d is my extrusion distance and what we see is that z z is after integrating l 1 minus l 2 minus d plus w t square by 2 m d right w t square by 2 m d and we want to see what is the value of this uh, what is the time taken by what is the time taken by this oscillator this inner nanotube to reach to region 3. So, time taken by by the inner nanotube inner nanotube to reach to reach region 3 region 3 is when it has traveled the distance z is equal to l 1 minus l 2 right. So, we will take uh, so this is at z is equal to l 1 minus l 2. So, we have to to reach region 3 from region 2 then the center of the nanotube must have traveled the distance of l 1 minus l 2 right. Uh, again from our this is directly coming from our description of the cases. So, the cutoff point is l 1 minus l 2 going from case 2 to case 3. So, we plug that value of z and find out how much time is taken by the by the oscillator to to stay in region 2 right. So, so when we use uh, when we use z equal to so use z uh, equal to l 1 minus l 2 and from here I see that my time taken by the oscillator to, to stay in region 2 is coming out to be d times square root of 2 m by w. Let me call this as t 1 right. Similarly, I can find out in the region of no acceleration in the region of 0 acceleration or region 3 in 0 uh, acceleration region which is our case 3 in 0 acceleration region which is our case 3 I see that my inner my inner nanotube experiences experiences no force my inner nanotube experiences no force because then it is going to travel with a constant velocity and the constant velocity is given by uh, by plugging the value of t 1 in our previous results. So, uh, so experience is no force it travels it implies it the nanotube travels travels from one cutoff point from z is equal to l 1 minus l 2 to the other cutoff point which is l 2 minus l 1. From one cutoff to the other cutoff is is marking the region which is denoted by 3 with with constant speed with constant speed v given by uh, which is given by the value of d z d t evaluated at t equal to t 1 right. So, d z d t that we found at t equal to t 1 right and once we evaluate this I get the value 2 w by m ok or my my time spent uh, to travel for the inner tube to travel in region 3 will be the total distance which is 2 l 2 minus l 1 right. So, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 divided by the total divided by the velocity which is 2 w by m and I see that I get a time point equal to 2 times l 2 minus l 1 times square root m by 2 w right. Okay. So, finally, we also have the region of constant deceleration in region region of constant deceleration well we are completely modeling a, a system with 0 friction. So, the region of constant deceleration uh, will be very sim will be symmetric to the region of constant acceleration uh, or 
students who do not uh, believe this should directly find the time taken in this constant deceleration region similar to our uh, region uh, in similar to our analysis for constant acceleration case. So, in case of constant deceleration, deceleration uh, the part the time taken by the system will be again the time taken to spend in this region will be again T 1 this is via via symmetry arguments of the system. Okay. So, that is the result in short. So, so, now let us add up the total time taken by the system. So, what is the total time taken? The total the total time taken for for one oscillation it will be the time taken in the region of constant deceleration right. So, that is in in case 2 plus the time taken in case 4 which is via symmetry the same the same time plus the time taken in case 3 which is the region of constant uh, constant uh, speed times times 2 because the motion gets repeated after going from one end to the other. So, now we have that the total period of oscillation or it implies the period of oscillation period of oscillation becomes 2 times 2 t 1 plus t 2 ok, 2 times 2 t 1 plus t 2 and this is also equal to 4 t 1 plus 2 t 2 and we can plug in all the values of t 1 and t 2 we have found and we see that my period of oscillation my period of oscillation will be t which is 2 times 2 t 1 plus t 2 which is also equal to uh, after plugging in the values of t 1 and t 2 will be equal to 4 d times square root 2 m by w right. So, plus plus 4 times l 2 minus l 1 times square root m by 2 w or I can club these two uh, two expressions I see that my t comes out to be uh, 4 times uh, l 2 minus l 1 uh, plus 2 d times square root of m by 2 w right. So, that is my period t of oscillations and and in this case let me finally, write down what is the oscillatory frequency. The oscillatory the oscillatory frequency will be given by f which is also equal to 1 by t will be will be 1 by 4 l 2 minus l 1 plus 2 d times square root of 2 w by m right. Okay where where my work done w is minus e c c the cylinder cylinder interaction star d ok. So, this is my period of oscillation which has now been found completely through the Newtonian mechanics. Now, notice that if my nano rods are almost similar in length if my l 1 is equal to l 2 and the extrusion distance is minimal or d goes to 0 I see that my frequency goes to infinity which means that small extrusion equal length nano rods frequency is almost immeasurable because it goes to infinity. So, this is just a an information an observation. So, notice this observation uh, if we see that f goes to infinity when l 1 is equal to l 2 and d goes to 0 right or this is the case of faster faster oscillations faster oscillations with with lower lower amplitude faster oscillations with lower amplitude right so in the limit of zero amplitude we 
we uh, we expect that these oscillations are almost unreliably uh, small to be measured. So, so what I just said is that in this particular case when the frequency goes to infinity this is not a case of practical interest because these frequencies are almost immeasurable. Okay. So, uh, z so, 0 this is the case of 0 uh, amplitude limit, 0 amplitude limit is of no practical interest because they cannot be measured without errors. Okay. So, so, that is just one assumption. Okay, so, so, so let us now look at the same model of this oscillatory motion of these nanotubes via our Hamilton's, Hamilton's equation or the Hamiltonian formulation. So, now let us look at the variational approach. So, let us try to answer question 3 using our variational approach. Okay. So, that is via my Hamilton's principle. Okay. So, now to write down my Hamiltonian we have to look at what is my kinetic energy and what is my potential energy of the problem. So, my kinetic energy of the problem is given by k is half m z dot square right? and my potential energy of the problem is given by v which is E c c star times. So, I am now going to write down the potential energy of all the 5 cases that I have discussed in the earlier discussion in the form of a single expression using my heavy side function. So, v is E c c star z plus l 1 l z plus l plus times h of z plus l plus minus z plus l minus times uh, well times z of l well z plus l minus h of uh, h of uh, h of z, z plus l minus uh, minus z minus l minus h of z minus l minus right. So, 1 2 3 plus z minus l plus of h of z minus l plus and that is uh, that is my potential where my l l minus and my l plus are going to be well we need to write down what is l minus and l plus uh, l l minus is l 2 minus l 1 and l plus is L 2 plus L 1. Okay. Okay. So, so, this is the potential energy completely written in a single expression using my heavy side function. So, these are my heavy side functions okay, and with the usual definition. Okay. So, then we set up we set up the Lagrangian, we set up the Lagrangian of the system. Lagrangian of the system. So, L is equal to k minus v and then we set up the action integral, the action integral which is f of z of t. My action integral is integral k minus v d t. Right? Uh, so, that is my action integral and my Hamilton's principle says that the optimal solution to the action integral will, uh, will be given by the principle of least action or the extremal to this action integral. Right? So, by Hamilton's principle, by Hamilton's principle, I have the path of the tube the path of the tube z of t is the extremal of the action, is the extremal of the action. 
right. So, the path of the tube is the extremal of the action. Okay, so, then next, uh, so we, we have to extremize uh, the action uh, integral and we look at now the Hamilton's, the, the let us begin with our Euler Lagrange equation, but even before that notice that my Lagrangian, notice the Lagrangian is independent of the independent variable t, which means that we can very well use our Beltrami identity to write to reduce our Euler Lagrange, right. So, notice, so this is all from here, note that note that my Lagrangian L is independent, is independent of the independent variable t or from here if I use my Beltrami identity, my Beltrami identity, I see that I am going to use the following. So, z dot partial L partial z dot minus L is equal to a constant, right. So, using Beltrami identity I get the following and so this particular del L del z dot that is completely a contribution coming from the kinetic energy will give me m z dot square minus L is a constant or my L is so, this note that this quantity is 2 times the kinetic energy, right, by via a definition, and L is kinetic energy minus the potential energy, okay. So, minus the potential energy which is P, that is how, and then we rearrange, we rearrange this relation, we get that. Uh, so, 2 times kinetic energy minus kinetic energy plus potential energy is a constant, or I get that K E plus P E uh, right, let me denote, denote it by K plus V, this is also equal to a constant or what I am getting is the Beltrami identity is telling me again the, the net energy is conserved in the system. Okay, so, then so which means that the total, total energy is conserved, okay, so total energy is conserved. So, I can also find this constant of on, on my right hand side of this relation. So, so if I take if I take my initial work W, take my initial work uh, work done to be to be W, my initial work done to be W, uh, which is uh, which is eventually minus E C C star times D depends on how much is the extrusion length. Right. So, if I take my initial work done W, then work done to extrude the inner tube by a distance. So, this is my E C C star times D, right. And my initial take my initial kinetic energy to be 0, right. My initial kinetic energy to be 0, then, then, uh, then the above using this my above constant, this constant comes out to be, this constant comes out to be W plus 2 L 1 E C C star, right. Why this second term? Because, because of the potential of the system when it is not accelerating, because at uh, in my case 3, uh, that is the work done by the system. Uh, so, so, this quantity is the additional work done by the system in extruding out from the equilibrium position, right. So, this is the additional additional work done. Note that when we have two nanotubes, right. So, let me draw this figure here of the inner and the outer. So, we first extrude by a distance d and also before even extruding by a distance d, it also has to be extruded by a distance 2 L 1 which is the length of the inner nanotube. So, so that is the additional work done, work done because of this following diagram. Okay. So, my constant is the following which I have written. So, now, so now from, from this relation I see that my k, my kinetic energy 
is equal to W plus 2 L 1 ECC star minus V or I can write down by plugging in plugging in the expression for V, I can see that this is also equal to minus E C C star times d, times d minus 2 L 1 plus z plus. So, I am just plugging in the value of v times the heavy side function z plus l plus minus z plus l minus times the heavy side function z plus l l minus right minus z minus l minus times h of z minus l minus right. So, d minus 2 l 1 plus this. Uh, so, 1 2 3 we have 1 2 3 terms and then there is a fourth term also plus z minus l plus times h of z minus l plus right. So, these are my four my four terms and from here I I can see that this kinetic energy is also equal to m z dot square by 2 right or from from this whole giant, giant relation I see that my z dot is equal to. So, let me let me let me denote this giant of an expression by small k as a function of z right. So, from here I see that z dot or the velocity is 2 times k of z the giant expression divided by uh, divided by the mass of the uh, nanotube m. And of course, this is my equation of motion I can integrate it once and find out uh, the time period of oscillation, but that is going to be very very cumbersome. Instead we look at we look at the time period in uh, in a different way notice that from from a. So, I am not going to integrate a and find out the respective times of uh, of the motion of this particle, but instead I am going to directly uh, well uh, from well I can definitely integrate a to find time period. What I cannot do is to find the position as a function of time because of the complexity of the square root function. So, so I am going to integrate integrate a to find to find the period of oscillation. When I integrate I see that my half the period of oscillation is going to be given the integral of the arc length s by v. So, this is my v right and now I am going to. So, my limits are minus of l minus minus d to l minus plus d right and then this is also equal to integral of the same limits minus of l minus minus d to l minus plus d times d z divided by z dot. And then of course, this is going to be divided into three different uh, integrals. This is also equal to integral of minus l minus d minus l minus minus d to minus l minus of d z by z dot plus integral from minus l minus to l minus of d z by z dot plus integral of l minus to l minus plus d of d z by z dot. So, these are the three different integrals that are being broken because of the, the use of heavy side function. So, within these three integrals I have constant uh, sorry I have a continuous description of z dot or so z dot is continuous ok. So, these are my break points which are uh, which are uh, underlined where my z dot loses uh, the, the, the continuity of its the continuity ok. Ok, so then it turns out that this. So, let me specifically write down my function k z in these three limits of integration are as follows. So, this is minus E c c star times 
times d plus l minus plus z this is when minus this well minus l minus minus d to z to z from minus l minus and then the second region is E C C star times D. This is from minus L minus to Z from L minus and finally, minus E C C star of D plus L minus minus Z and where Z is from L minus to L minus plus D, right. So, I have I have this following values of the function in these three regions and then I plug it into all these three integrals and let me write down the final answer after integration. I see that after integration I get the following the half the time period is going to come out to be negative minus m by 2 E C C star times of course, in the first three regions I am going to get minus l minus minus d to minus l minus of d z divided by square root d plus l minus plus z. In the second I have minus l minus to plus l minus this is uh, d z by square root d and plus the last integral is minus l minus to l minus plus d uh, d z by square root of d plus l minus minus z. Okay. So, when I complete the integral I am going to get that this is also equal to uh, 2 times square root of m by 2 w where my w is E C C star times d with a minus sign times 2 d plus l 2 minus l 1 or or I see that my t turns out to be turns out to be 4 times this quantity which is which is the same same period that we have obtained same period via as obtained as obtained via uh, the Newtonian mechanics okay, via the Newtonian mechanics. Okay. So, so that completes my description in the, the Hamiltonian description of these nanorod oscillators and I hope that the students have learned in this course starting from the basic theory of calculus of variations to how to apply this theory in optimal control problems and finally, how to look at the motion or of carbon nanorods in various situations. So, I hope the students are going have learnt, uh, learnt quite a few tricks to solve the problems involving calculus of variations with specific applications in uh, optimal control and nanomechanics. So, thank you very much for listening and thanks a lot.